Moves Institute grew out of some research efforts in the 90s in the computer science department. It was originally a collaboration between computer science and operations research. Instead of building a special purpose infantry simulation, they used the people's familiarity with games and first person shooters to help overcome the, the training to using a simulation. And it's a low cost way to get soldiers to go into training. So they'll set up scenarios and they'll have, you'll set up a squad and you'll go through maneuvers. Uh, everyone's playing on the game, but you're working together collectively to accomplish a task or to reach a training goal. In 2000, uh, the Moves Institute was founded, and since then we've been the Moves Institute and we've been working on this uh, curriculum and doing research in modeling and simulation and virtual environments. One of the big things about simulation is that it can be lower cost than live training. If you do a division level exercise, you may have, you know, 15, 20, 25,000 people that you're, you would have to put out in the field. We do research in, in anything to do with modeling and simulation as a, as a discipline in itself. How can models be developed and how can simulations be developed that are useful in essentially military applications and in military environments. So my problem, specifically mine, was to take an existing decision-making task, combine that with an existing cognitive model, and evaluate a subject's decision-making in real time. The MOG is, is the, the MOVES Academic Working Group. Uh, it's an annual event uh, that we hold uh, in May uh, every year, and it's kind of a steering meeting for MOVES. This device is unique because you can just set it in the room, walk out, and with that tablet, you can remotely get that feedback from that device. So what we want to do is we want it to get who our stakeholders are, who are the, the people who uh, we do research for, uh, the people who are interested in modeling simulations, and the people who receive our graduates. It has no program of record. We bought about 35 of these back in the late 1980s from uh, Norway, and, and there's no program of record to supply parts for them. How, how much did you address the intellectual property rights? Right, and that's, yeah, that, that's the key right there, is, is now we need to look at contracting, because. Yeah, we can scan and 3D print a part, but do we have the right to reproduce that part? Yeah. No. Where is modeling and simulation going? What are the current problem areas that we're having with modeling and simulation? Uh, what are the things that our graduates need to be educated on? When video games started becoming fairly popular and the idea was, was proposed that um, maybe a way to uh, increase interest in, on people if, for recruiting would be to create a game, to create a, a video game. America's Army was an effort that they started, I think it was about 99 or so. And it was very similar to what the Army and Marines do for rifle marksmanship training. It was teaching you how to shoot inside the simulation. And then to move, to teach you how to move around, they had an obstacle course. It was an actual, modeled on an actual obstacle course at an Army base. And you'd have to go up on the logs and vault over and crawl under. And that's how they taught you how to do movement. So it was really interesting the way they did that. That technology was just emerging and becoming feasible. And so the initial efforts on all that development was done here at NPS. Back then, the military didn't look at gaming as a, a viable training tool or as anything other than entertainment. And by using that as a recruiting tool, they saw value in that. And now we use a similar, currently one that we use to train, is called uh, VBS-3, uh, Virtual Battlefield Simulation 3. But one of the big things about simulation is that it can be lower cost than live training. So instead of having tanks out in the field burning gallons per mile, you're burning hundreds and thousands of gallons of fuel to get a ship to move around. There's a lot of advantages to doing it in uh, simulation. There are certain things that you definitely want to do live training on. You can't do it all in simulation, but there's a lot of things that simulation can do to help and prepare and, and replicate situations that you aren't able to do in, inside of a live training environment.